You're not doing a book tour for this book, is that because of uh, past experiences of book tours? Well, book touring is fine, except in America. I've had, about, se about 10 years ago, I went around a lot of America, and everywhere I went, it was a disaster. My favorite story is turning up in somewhere like Milwaukee or San Francisco, and there was a huge Borders bookshop. And as I walked through the bookshop to this huge room that could sit 300 people, the woman said to me, um, you know, we had Isabella Allende last week. It was amazing. It was standing room only. We had 350 people, and there were so many people who couldn't come. We're going to have it again next week, and there are 300 more people that want to come and see her. So I thought, this is great. You know, I'm going to go into a room. There are going to be 300 people people. I arrived in this room. There were rows and rows of empty seats. Um, there was one man sitting in the back row reading a book that wasn't mine in a baseball cap. So I fall on him and I go, you are my only fan. And he looks really embarrassed and says, actually, I'm just waiting for my wife and kids to finish shopping because they're in the bookshop next door. And I had to sit next to him and say, can you please talk to me? Because this is the most embarrassing moment of my life. There was not one person except for him, but there was no one there for me. And all my books piled up, the podium, the glass of water, mortifying. So unless I become a number one bestseller on the New York Times bestsellers list, I'm not going to go on American book tour again. And I can solemnly swear on behalf of the good people of Chiswick, we will not do that to you. Thank you. So, yes, tell me, how excited are you to come to the Chiswick Book Festival? I'm so excited about going to the Book Festival. I think it's a great opportunity to meet readers and to meet other authors. And it's just a fantastic atmosphere, getting everybody together, people who love books. You're a number one best-selling author with the Sunday Times bestsellers list. You're normally in the top ten for whatever you write, and you've written 16 books. Tell me about this one. This one is the second in a trilogy. It's based in Ireland. It starts in 1910. It's about three women born in 1900 in Ireland. The daughter of the castle, the daughter of the cook, and the posh first cousin who lives in London, who are all great friends and grow up spending these idyllic summers together at Castle Deverell. Then, of course, the First World War happens, the War of Independence happens, and their lives are all torn apart in different ways, and they're splintered and really the whole trilogy is them finding their way home because they all remember this idyllic time at this beautiful castle and the picnics on the beach and riding over the hills and the hunting and I've just finished the third one and oh I need a holiday I'm ready to I'm ready to move on to something totally different. You mentioned the word holiday there I'd say this is perfect holiday reading uh, I'd say the style was Maeve Binchy meets Downton Abbey. Um, is that about right? I'm longing for Julian Fellows to pick up the phone and go, darling, this is a mini-series. I'm dying to write it for you. That's my dream. So yes, I would say that's a pretty accurate description. How did you research it? I'd written Secrets of the Lighthouse about four years ago, and that was based in Connemara. Loved writing about Ireland. I read lots of books. I, you know, I saw lots of movies. The genius, actually, behind the book, and I really can't call him a genius, is this amazing man who I met on the internet who emailed me because he'd read one of my books and really enjoyed it. And it transpired very quickly that he was Irish from Cork, and he's in his 70s, I think, or late 60s. He knows everything about it. It's one of these sort of encyclopedia memories where he knows everything about Ireland. And so we plotted together. We ended up becoming great friends. He comes to my house on a regular basis. There's a lot that you don't get from books that Tim was able to give me to bring that family to life. So he's been such a help. I couldn't have done it without him. We're asking all the authors this. Uh, what are you reading at the moment? And what would you recommend? What's your favorite book? Well, what I'm reading at the moment, and I can honestly tell you this, I am reading my husband's book, The Romanovs. So I've got that by my bedside. Um, the book that I would recommend for summer reading is a book I recommend to everyone. It's not a, it's not a massively well-known book. It's called The Enchanted April by Elizabeth von Arnhem. It's set between the wars. It's four women who respond to an advert in a newspaper to take a villa in Italy for the whole month of April. They're very, very different women. They don't all know each other and they're all escaping for different reasons. And it's beautifully written. It's charming. The characters are extraordinary and you get into each character's head. You know what motivates them all and how Italy transforms them. And you, you just end with this wonderful sense of deep satisfaction. I think it's one of the most charming books I've ever read.